On Tuesday, March 10th, Robert Morris will be playing St. Francis Brooklyn for the Northeast Conference Championship. Joining me now from the RMU Century is sports editor Nick Bazzelli. Nick, welcome. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about Robert Morris hoops. How have they reached the tournament championship? What have they done this season that's been the difference maker? Well, I mean, they started off the year playing a lot of high conference teams such as North Carolina and Georgetown. They struggled early, and a lot of people thought it was going to be a down year. But once conference play starts, started early in January, you know, they really kicked into high gear. And they had some ups and downs. Obviously, they would go on a winning streak, then they would lose three in a row, go on another winning streak. But they're playing some of their best basketball now. Uh, they're winners of three straight, I believe. And, you know, there's, they're starting to kick into high gear. Everything's working in motion. And here they are, and they're in the final game, looking to go to the NCAA tournament. Now, Lucky Jones, your 6'6 guard, coming off the bench, he's been a big part of your current winning streak and helping you reach the championship game. How has he been able to elevate it through the tournament? Yeah, like you said, he started the season as a regular starter, and then the past couple games he's been coming off the bench kind of to provide a spark. And Army likes to run a three-guard set, and he, they bring him in as the first guy off the bench. And in the last game against Bryant, you know, he didn't play that well, but he really kicked it up. He had, uh, I believe, 12 points, um, nine rebounds. And then the previous game against Wagner, he had he tied a career high with 27 points. And you know he's he's just really playing his best basketball. He's a guy who really wants to make it to the NCAA tournament. He's lost in the finals of the Northeast Conference Championship twice. He's lost in the semifinals in sophomore year. So he's a guy who's just really thinking like, hey, this is my last chance. And he's already solidified himself as one of the best players in RMU history, but without sending going to the NCAA tournament, you know, he doesn't really have his his resume is not complete, and he really wants to change that. All right, so he's hungry for a championship and a win and a bid in the postseason. Now, a lot of times with that energy, it'll translate over to the defensive end. You run a two-three zone, and you've been pretty successful against smaller teams. Fortunately, Brooklyn is a bit on the smaller side. Do you see that success being able to carry over for one more game to get lucky into the uh, NCAA champ tournament? Yeah, it should translate over. Like you said, uh, Brooklyn's tallest player is 6'7", and Armu has a 6'9", forward in Stephen Hawkins, as well as two 6'8", guys. So, yeah, like I said, they obviously both teams are matched up really well with size and they should be able to run the 2-3 effectively against St. Francis Brooklyn. Obviously, when you have a guy like Jalen Cannon, who's the NEC Player of the Year, who can shoot the ball really effective, is averaging about 16 points per game, that's always a threat if they could somehow you know, try to deconfigure the 2-3 zone and Cannon goes off and has a really big game. But yeah, like I said, rebounding should be a big key, and both teams are evenly matched. RMU has a little advantage on the height, and... Hopefully it will pay off and we'll see what happens. All right, it should be a great game. Again, that's at 4 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2 on Tuesday. Uh, Nick, thanks for joining me. And good yeah, luck thanks to for having me.